Hey guys, before we start this video, I just want to make one announcement. So, what you are looking at right now is the new draft. You guys are wondering, wow, how'd you get some new draft picks or whatever? Uh, so I accidentally deleted the old uh, save file for the Marlins franchise and I didn't back it up. That was stupid of me. So, my bad. What I ended up doing is I did all the exact moves that I did. I even did them in like the same dates. Like I checked back on my old recordings, made sure I did everything the same exact, simulated up until the date of the next gameplay video that like I did ex everything exactly the same but the only thing that changed is we did get these new draft picks so these are the new players I figured it was worth it to show you guys these and uh, yeah it's pretty much it so anyway nothing's changed guys do not worry about it like is honestly if it wasn't for the like new draft picks I probably would have never even told you guys this but anyway uh, so that's pretty much it so thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoy this commentary yo what's going down everybody it is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston, and today we're back for episode 6 of the Miami Marlins franchise on MLB 13 The Show, and I don't know if you guys caught it there, but we're in about mid-July, and we are winless so far in July. You can see our records plummeted to 36 and 54, we have really fallen off, and um, you know, we just have completely played ourselves out of any chance of making the playoffs this season, so it is time to go, not necessarily into full tank mode, but we're certainly going to be sellers at the deadline. Uh, the trades that we'll make at the deadline will be coming in the next episode, and um, it's certainly going to be a pathetic second half of the season, but hopefully, hopefully, I'll, I'll provide some somewhat exciting gameplays for you guys, and we'll just try and breeze through the second half of the season, and then uh, hopefully find greener pastures in the uh, future. But anyway, today's pitching matchup is Chris Medlin versus Ricky Nolasco. Chris Medlin, the... Uh, the young phenom from the Braves last year really came on late after he's moved into the rotation. Ricky Nolasco, one of the veterans that we're looking to trade possibly at the deadline. Uh, you can see the Braves line up there. Simmons, Johnson, Upton, Hayward, Freeman, McCann, Uggle, and Upton. And the defensive situation for the Miami Marlins. So you guys can get a look on who's playing today. And let's get right into this gameplay. So Ender Alton Simmons is up in the top of the first inning. The 1-1 count from Ricky Nolasco. Simmons, this was one deep to left field. That one is going to bounce off of the wall. A bad attempt by Scott Pitsetnik to try and catch it. He fields it cleanly, however, and is going to end up throwing it onto the cutoff man. But Simmons is there at second base for a leadoff double. Now with two away in the inning, Jason Hayward up. He's going to take that one to deep right field. That one is back, and that one is gone. A late jump by John Carlos Stan. He could not take that one back. So the Braves jump out to an early 2-0 lead. Freddie Gonzalez very pleased with this young right fielder. And Jason Hayward, see rounds the bases. Ricky Nolasco, not very happy with himself so far. You guys also might be able to tell uh, we are playing in Sun Life Stadium, the old Miami Marlins ballpark, and the Florida Marlins ballpark. We're also wearing throwbacks. Uh, that's actually the game, like when I went to play this game, it had set for throwbacks. I was going to change them, but then I thought it would be cool to play in, Sun, in uh, Sun Life Stadium. I guess it's called the old Miami ballpark. So, why not? Figure to switch things up. YOLO. <laughs> anyway, Freddie Freeman off the bat here on the 0-1. He's going to ground this one to Solano at, for, er, at second. He'll fire on to first for the out, and we will get out of the inning safely, only allowing those two runs. So, hopefully the offense can pick up Ricky Nolasco. They could not in the first inning. So top of the second, Dan Ugla up. He hits that one down the left field line for a base hit. It gets past Pudsednik. Terrible fielding so far but by Pudsednik. He ends up firing this one into second or into the cutoff man, but not before Ugla gets there for a double. So Braves get another man in scoring position. Now 2-1 to one is the count to BJ Upton, who's going to crush this one to deep left field into that part of the park where no one ever sits, but I guess there are people sitting there. I mean, it's pretty unrealistic that there's fans on a Marlins game, but anyway... Uh, so that's a two-run home run for BJ Upton. He gives the Braves a 4 nothing lead now. So they're extending their lead, trying to uh, maybe put this game away early on. That'd be pretty good if you were a Braves fan. Not good if you were a Marlins fan. But either way, you can take a look at the replay of Upton's deep, deep home run over 400 feet to left center field over that little wall there. Now Earl Dalton and Darleton Simmons up 0-2, count two outs. He's going to end up popping this one up to Pitsenic and left. This time he'll field it cleanly, unlike he's done so far today. He's actually going to have a little bit of trouble with it, but he ends up getting it. So anyway, that ends the second inning, but the Braves are already on top 4 to nothing. Let's see if they can hold this lead throughout the game. Now Justin Upton up in the top of the fourth. He crushes this one to deep right field. Giancarlo Stan, not the fleetest of foot. He will knock it over there in time to even attempt to rob that home run. So Upton hits this one out. A solo home run for Justin Upton. And the Braves extend their lead now to 5-0. It's been a home run parade so far. Their third of the game. And, you know, been a rough day for Ricky Nolasco. He started the year very hot, but he just struggled every, really ever since we fell out of the race, as with a lot of our players. But... Anyway, 
Uh, hopefully his trade value doesn't go down too much. We can get something for him. That'd be nice. He's a 30-year-old on the last year of his contract. So Logan Morrison up now, bottom of the fourth, the 0-1 count. Morrison's going to hit this one past the first baseman, Freddie Freeman, for a base hit. So let's see if the Marlins offense can get anything going as Logan Morrison gets a one-out single. Now our next batter is Rob Brandley, and Brandley's going to end up grinding this one to Freeman, and they will turn the 3-6-3 double play. It's just like that. Chris Medlin is out of the inning, so the Marlins offense could not get anything going. They could not support their pitcher, Rick Nolasco. He's still on the mound here in the top of the fifth inning. Chris Johnson up. Johnson playing a little wall ball here. He takes this one off of the left center field wall into the deepest part of the ballpark, almost 434 feet out there. Johnson around second. He's heading for third, and he's going to be in there safely with a, I believe, a leadoff triple for the Atlanta Braves. So another good chance to drive in a run. For the Atlanta Braves, just exactly what they need. Already up 5 0. Now, two outs. Justin Upton is up. He's going to end up hitting this one back up the middle for a base hit. So, Upton drives in the runs, and the Braves extend their lead now 6 0. Ricky Nolasco's rough day continues, and the whole rough day for the entire Miami Marlins team continues as it's not been a good not been a good July, not been a good day so far. Jason Hayward up. That's going to be fielded nicely by Ricky Nolasco. Fires on to second for the force. And we end up getting out of the inning. So we're still down six to nothing. Hopefully the Marlins can get something going here. Still a chance to possibly win this game, but highly unlikely. Aaron Harang in now for the Marlins. Freddie Freeman hits that one into the right center field gap. Double one hop up against the wall. Fielded by Kearns in center. He fires it to the shortstop for the cutoff. And I believe that was, yes, Freddie Freeman gets in there for a stand-up double. No contest there. So the Braves with another opportunity to get a run. Now one out. Hits it to Dan, or Dan Ugly hits it to Morrison over there at first. That advances Freeman to third now with two away in the inning for the Atlanta Braves. The top of the six, that is. And uh, I hope you guys like those Atlanta Braves throwbacks. I know I do. BJ Upton up now. He's going to take that one. Oh, it is not fielded cleanly. By Placido Polanco, one of the best defensive third basemen that uh, I've seen in recent times. And he just could not fill that one cleanly. That's too bad. Hoping he could back up our uh, long reliever Aaron Harang, but sadly cannot do so. Now Chris Medlin is up. He's going to hit this one to uh, center field. Luckily, Austin Kearns is there, and he's going to fill that one cleanly. And that will retire the side for the Atlanta Braves. So now we're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Donovan Solano up the 2-2 count. He has been one of our, probably our lone bright spot, well, not our lone bright spot, but he's been a bright spot for us so far. Uh, he's still hitting in the 270s, 280s, and it seems like I get one or two hits with him every game. I play with these guys, so uh, he's been a bright spot for us so far. Hopefully he can continue his hot streak. It uh, looks like John Carlos stand up now. He strikes out swinging. We have gotten no production from him so far, at least in the games I've played. It has been a rough go of things so far for John Carlos Stanton. Now, later in the inning, Logan Morrison is up the 0-2 count, and he's going to hit this one into the right center field gap. He took that low pitch, read it well. That goes, I believe, right off the wall. Solano will round third. He's going to end up scoring easily, and Logan Morrison is going to be safe at third base. It looked like he might have been out there. The tag must have been a little bit late. We'll take it. <laughs> Trust me, I'll take anything I can get at this point. So, we cut the lead to 7-1. Now later in the inning, Rob Brantley up, our young catcher. He's going to end up hitting this one to Simmons at Troy Stop. The sure-handed, sure-fielding Simmons will fire onto Freeman at first, and that will wrap up the inning. So we get one run back, but we're still not 7-1, and there really isn't much hope at this point for our comeback. We'll see what we can do. It'd be nice to uh, at least try to get some more runs on the board, make this game somewhat competitive, but... We are the 2013 Miami Marlins, and there really isn't much to expect from this team. As uh, proven by the fact that in real life, I think they're only like 4-14 and 14 or something like that. But anyway, you can take a look at a six-inning recap there. Seven runs on nine hits so far for the Braves. No errors. One hit or one run on seven hits and one error for the Miami Marlins so far. Key performances from BJ Upton and Logan Morrison so far. Also, Chris Medlin has thrown seven strong innings here. Bottom of the eighth inning, Medlin still going strong. Scott Pitsetting has really struggled lately. He strikes out on the check swing there. I'm not sure if that was called or if they said he went around. Either way, strikeout to strikeout. Now later in the inning, 2-2 count to Donovan Solano. Solano is going to end up swinging and missing on that one in the dirt. The catcher will fire on to first for the out. So two away. Not Logan Morrison. Or not Logan Morrison. Excuse me. John Carlos Stanton up. The 0-0 count. He takes that one to the left field. Hit very hard, but it was right at Justin Upton and left. So that's a 1-2-3 eighth inning for Chris Medlin. Still pitching strong, even though he has a lot of eight hits. Really, the fact that he can go eight innings in a game in uh, late July, or mid-July, that's pretty impressive. So anyway, BJ Upton getting things started off in the top of the ninth with the single back up the middle. 
that will, Kearns will fire that one into second base, but Upton reaches first safely. So, another base runner for the Braves. They've had plenty of them so far today. Now, Anderlton Simmons is up the 0-2 count. He takes that one into right field. Logan Morrison feels, and not Logan Morrison. I keep getting him confused with Giancarlo Stanton. Giancarlo Stanton feels that one, fires on to third, and that will be first and second out for the Atlanta Braves. Your next batter is the two-hole Chris Johnson, the 0-1 count to him. He hits that one to left field. That will be fielded by Scott Pesenic. He will misplay it, though. Look at that. Could not get a grip on it with his glove. So a run scores. The Braves extend their lead even further. Exactly what they need. Oh, man. This has been a rough day so far at the office for the Miami Marlins pitching staff. Not so much for the Braves hitting, but either way, Justin Upton up now. The 1-2 count. He's going to take that one into right field for a base hit. Jack Stanton comes up firing. The throw home will be just offline. Looks like it got there in time, but the throw was not very accurate. I got a yellow on the throwing meters. That's too bad. But now, looks like Jason Hayward up here. He's going to hit that one to deep center field. That will be fielded by Austin Kearns out there in center. He's going to try and fire it to third, but he does not have the strongest arm in the world. So, I believe that was Simmons, I think, who advances. Oh, no, that was Chris Johnson who advances all the way to third base. First and third now for Brian or Freddie Freeman. He lines this one. Oh, Polanco muffs it again. The throw to first is not in time. Placido Polanco has had a rough day so far. And it continues with that fielding error. So the Braves extend their lead once again, continuing to just pour it on 10 to 1 now. Brian McCann ends up taking that pitch right there. That will set up a 2 2 count. It looks like uh, Nathan Eovaldo was not too happy with that call. I don't know why. But either way, we get Brian McCann to pop up to right field. John Carlos Stan fields on one, and we enter the bottom of the night down nine runs. Pretty much no chance of coming back, right? Uh, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. Got eight it so far. Well, two away now. Chris Coughlin up pinch hitting for Austin Kearns. And he pops it up. That's pretty much going to wrap up this gameplay. We end up losing 10-1. to Disappointing loss for the Miami Marlins. I hope you guys will be excited for next episode on Thursday. That will be the trade deadline episode plus another gameplay. I think you guys are going to really like the moves we made. Uh, they're not going to be too realistic. I mean, they're not, like, outrageously unrealistic. Like, I didn't trade, like, a 60 overall for, like, an 80 overall. But um, we got some prospects that I'm not sure teams, uh, the teams that they came from would trade them in real life. But, you know, that's fine. I really don't care. The hater is going to hate. That's just what they do. That's why they're haters. <laughs> anyway, so that wraps up this gameplay. You're going to check out the post-game stats here in just a moment. And the player of the game, I believe, is going to end up being BJ Upton. I think it's one of the Uptons. We'll check it out here in just a moment. Uh, but anyway, you can see the Braves gathering on the field afterwards. Yeah, it does look like BJ Upton's going to end up with the player of the game because I'm pretty sure he's like the only one who wears high socks on that team. Yeah, of course it's him. I like BJ Upton. Uh, I wish he was better. <laughs> but uh, he's certainly, I, th I think the Braves overpaid. Now, that's my personal opinion. But anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Just I'm out. Peace.